let's have a look at how we will estimate the cost of the activities. What are the principles we use? What is the precision? And I have a very nice story there. What are the sources for estimation? Different methods, analogous, parametric and bottom-up estimating. And again, we come back to our old friends, PERT and three-point estimation. Principles of estimating the cost of the activities. When we look at the cost of the activities, we have to take into account different parameters or several parameters. First of all, the labor rate. How much do the people cost who are working on those activities? In an organization, you will typically not work with the actual rate or the cost of the people. First of all, it may be a problem of disclosing confidential information. On the other hand, costs include everything. It's all the cards they have, all the advantages, health insurance. So it's a lot more than just the wages. Typically, in large companies, people are divided into levels. For example, in AT&T, there was a level 7.1, 7.2, level 8 and so on. So when you're using people on your project who have a certain level, the organization will give you the average cost of people of that level. We also have to include the material cost. What materials do we need to do the project or the activities? We may take into account inflation parameters. What is the inflation, for example, of people over the years or the wages of the people better. Uh, some risk factors, there may be some other parameters there. So when we're estimating the cost of the activities, but the two top ones are the most common parameters that we use. When we look at estimating precision, when somebody asks you an estimate, it may be very difficult to give a very good and close estimate with certain precision. Now, in order to be compliant with your organization, the organization should define different types of estimates. When I was in AT&T, my boss, a very nice guy, Typically, we had short discussions and meetings, having a cup of coffee at the coffee machine. One day, he asked me, he said, oh, look, I need uh, an estimate for this customer, a wide area network connection, this capacity. Can you give me an estimate? So I was already following my courses of project management at the school of AT&T. And I sent him an email, I said, this is the cost, rough order of magnitude. I just wrote ROM. Now for IT people, ROM is random only memory. So that was a little bit dazzling for him. So he asked me, what does it mean, ROM? And I said, well, it's a rough order of magnitude. Well, very nice. What does it mean? And I told him that my accuracy or the accuracy of the estimate it's from minus 25 to plus 75%. He started to get all kinds of colors of the rainbow until I explained to him that how can I make an estimate if I only have a very high level of information of the project. So finally he agreed and we started communicating like that, rough order of magnitude. Be careful when people ask you for a number. They always say, oh, it's just an estimate. But once you give them a number, they never forget the number. And you're pushed in the corner and you cannot do anything anymore. So be careful. Organizations can define different uh, types of estimates and they can be part of the uh, standing operating procedures or the project management methodology. 
Sources for estimation, of course, we have experts when we don't know really about these activities, we don't know so much about it, we can uh, consult experts. Many companies have historical information, construction companies know how much work it takes uh, in AT&T, people typically knew how much time a specific task takes. There is the Delphi method. Delphi method where a group of experts are sharing experiences and the highest estimate and the lowest estimate are compared. The people explain how they obtained that specific estimate and another estimation round is done. Typically, three to four estimation rounds are needed until the group reaches a consensus. We can use databases. We can look at analogous parametric and bottom-up estimating. And of course, we have again our dear old friends, PERT and three-point estimation. So let's look at analogous parametric and bottom-up estimating. Analogous estimating compares your project with other projects. Based on the comparison of these two projects, we may have to adjust some parameters related to surface, capacity or inflation, we can make an estimated price of the project. Parametric estimating is a way of taking a parameter. For example, we make a flooring of one square meter. One square meter of flooring costs so much. So 100 square meter of flooring is 100 times more. So these are elements which are easy to use in estimations. Bottom-up estimating means that we start the estimation from the activities or the work packages and then add all those estimates together to find the total project budget. And finally, our dear old friends, PERT and three-point estimation, the same formulas, but now instead of using time, like we did before, the optimistic estimate A would be the lowest cost, the most optimistic cost of the activity. B will be the pessimistic cost of the uh, activity and M will be the most probable estimate like before the mode and the formulas are exactly the same. You can have exercises calculating the three-point values or the PERT values for these activities based on these three estimates. Now we are ready for the next point because now we will use this information to build our project cost schedule. Great work. See you in the next session.